So now we're just going to go through and do some examples. Uh, first example, we're going to take a vector in 3D and we're going to get something out in 3D. So it's going to basically be defined like this. So what does this mean? This means I'm going to take x times the first column plus y times the second column plus z times the third column. Let's see, so this is going to be just zero, so I can not worry about that. So the f in terms of the first row, it's going to be zero. Second row is going to be y plus zero. And the third row is going to be zero plus z. So basically, if you give me any x, y, and z, all this is going to do is just eliminate the x thing. So this is basically just going to smash it down so that we're only looking at the y, z plane given any vector. One thing to notice, so this is my px, oops, px, suppose, oops, suppose I take p times px. I can do that because the inputs and the outputs are coming from the same place. The domain and the codomain are the same. And I can ask what happens here. So this is going to be what I just say, 0, y, z. And what this is going to do is it's going to put a 0 there, and it's going to leave y and z alone, just as we did before. And notice this is the same thing as p times x. So the second time I hit this matrix is the same thing as the first time I do with it. So it's not going to really change any time after this. And so as a projection, what does this mean? So this basically says that if you give me any vector in x, y, z, it takes the x component and breaks it down, and I'm only just sitting in this yz plane. So in this particular case, the domain is R3. The range is going to be the, I think I said the wrong thing before, it's going to be the yc, yz plane. Right? It's everything here in this yz where all the x's are 0, and the codomain is R3, because that's these vectors all live in R3, even though they're going to be uh, projected down into that YZ plane. So let's look at this example. So what is this? So this is going to be X times 1, 0, plus Y times 0, minus 1. The first row is going to be X plus 0, Second row is going to be 0 plus minus y. So what does this do? Is This is going to take any vector. Suppose I have that. So this is going to be the vector x, y. The result is going to have the same x value, but the y value is going to be flipped. So if this is y, this is going to be minus y. So this thing is going to take any vector and just flip it around the x-axis. So for example, if I have a vector here, then my x is negative, but it doesn't change. I'm going to take the negative of that. So if this is, be careful here, this is x, ax is just going to be flipped around that direction. Notice if I do this twice, if I take r times rx, it's going to be r times x minus y, and what is this going to do? It's going to leave the x part alone, and it's going to change the sign, and notice all this is going to do, if I flip this around this x-axis and I flip it again, I'm going to end up in the same place. So if I do this thing twice, so r squared of x just gives me x. All right, I want to look at another example here. And in this example, I'm going to assume that I have some vector at some angle theta from the x-axis. And what I want to do is I want to rotate it around some right angle. So given this vector, I basically just want to twist it. So the question is, can I figure out what that is? 
All right, well, let's see. If this has some length L, then this distance here is going to be L cosine theta. This distance here is going to be L sine theta. So the x is going to be L, oops, sorry. The x is going to be L cosine theta. The y is going to be L sine theta. What should this be? Well, if this is L cosine theta, L sine theta, and if I turn it around some right angle, this is going to be L cosine theta plus pi over 2, right? Because that's going to be this distance right there is going to be theta plus pi over 2, which is there. And then the height is going to be L sine of the angle, and that angle now is theta plus pi over 2. All right, there are some nice trig identities here. I can never remember them. So I looked it up in advance, and if I remember right, so this is going to be minus L sine of theta, according to Wikipedia. And according to Wikipedia, this is L cosine theta. And since that's never wrong, it must be fine. So let me double check. Yep, that's what I have. Now notice L sine theta is my original y. I think of this as xy. Then what do I have? Minus L sine theta is minus y. And L cosine theta is just my original x. So I have now that rx is r times xy should give me minus yx. How can I think about that? I can think about that now. So I was giving x times some vector plus y times some vector. And let's see, so the x is there, so I'm going to have, there's no x there, so that's 0, 1. And here I've got a minus y and no y there, so I get that. So this is the same thing as taking 0, 1, minus 1, 0 times xy. So this vector here, that should be 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Right? So in this case, rx is 0, 1, minus 1, 0, x. It takes a vector in R2, gives me a vector in R2, so my domain is R2, my codomain is R2, and all it does is it takes a vector and rotates it around. Now notice I can take any vector here, if I were to undo this, I would rotate it clockwise, pi over 2 radians, and I can basically get anything I want here. Then in this case, the domain is going to be R2, so it's going to be a little different than the previous example. All right, last example. This is going to be looking at something called a QR code. QR code is basically a two-dimensional array of bits. So if I look at this thing right there, that's a bit. It's going to be either black or white. And I'm going to ask uh, what that is, and that's going to help me determine what this, this QR code uh, stands for, what the text is that this represents. The problem is, is that when I take a picture of this on my cell phone, I'm not going to hold that thing directly above it. So while this is the perfect 2D example, it's going to be all skewed and off in a different direction. I need to be a little careful here. So that's the X direction, that's the horizontal direction. But the way the computer science people do things, they do th that direction is the positive Y direction. And I want to know, how does the x direction and the y direction correspond to the image I take if I take it off a little kilt, off kilter here and I get this crazy shear? Now, the QR codes, they have a number of interesting points that are predefined. One set of these predefined points is the points here in the lower left, upper left, and upper right corners. This tells me the orientation, and these correspond to these points here. 
So in my image processing on my phone, my phone can determine these three points. And in determining these three points, I can get this direction and this direction. So notice, anything along this line is the same thing as anything in the x direction. So if I were down here, that's going to be off in the x direction. Or if I'm right there, that's my x component. And now this direction here is corresponds to my original y direction. So anything along this direction. So if I want to get to this point right there, I would go down that much, that percentage of the way down the image, and across that percentage of the image. And that's the same thing as going down this percentage of the image in this direction, and then across whatever percentage in that direction. So if I'm given this point right here, and I want to figure out what does it correspond to, I need to figure out these principal directions. And how do you do that is you find out where these are located. You can find the pixel numbers, and you can get the head and the tail for that direction, the head and the tail for that direction. So now, if I'm looking at that point right there, I can now think of that in terms of some percentage of the way down in the v direction, some percentage of the way over in the u direction. So given this point right here, so now this is my x and y from the image that my phone took. I can write that now in terms of x times u plus y times v. That is a matrix transformation where this first column is the vector u and the second column is the vector v. And if I want to relate that to the original, so if I have some original point here in terms of the the original image for the QR thing, so let's call that, uh, I've already used U and V, let's just call it, for lack of a better name, R and S, I now have something that looks like A times X equals some R, and in terms of trying to solve this to figure out uh, what the R is, I can just multiply A times X to get the R, or likewise, if I want to go backwards, if I want to know where the R is from my transfer, the original QR code, and I want to look in this image to figure out where that is, I can solve that by putting this matrix in uh, row echelon form and solving this system of equations. So by thinking about this in terms of this shear and writing this point in terms of these principal directions, I can define that as a matrix transformation. I can now use that in terms of the stuff we already know to be able to go back and forth from my original QR code to the image of the QR code that the camera has and find out whatever I need going either frontwards or backwards. Thank you.